uh, I guess about uh, 10 years later, and then uh, this came about 10 years after that, so we're, about, we're leaping decades here. And uh, this uh, digital physics caught on. There are digital physicists now all over the, all over the world. You know, digital physics is a solid branch of physics, still out on the fringe, but you know, breakthroughs only come from the fringe. Breakthroughs never come from the center. That's not the center's purpose. The center's purpose is stability and infrastructure, not creative thinking. The creative thinking always comes out on a fringe. So um, in any case, Brian looked at this because uh, the digital physicist said reality is virtual. It's computed. And the fundamental theory of physics says it, reality is because it is. You know, it starts with the Big Bang, and the Big Bang has no cause. It's an a causal thing. You know, there is no cause for the Big Bang. Physics just starts with a Big Bang without a cause. It happens. You have all this energy. It's very tightly packed. Then it expands and it cools, and you get planets coalesce and suns and so on. But there is no cause for a Big Bang. So you know, that's a mystical assumption. Something without a cause. So physics is really the fundamental. Uh, traditional physics is really based upon a mystical assumption that something happens out of nothing which is the Big Bang. So our universe has kind of popped out of nothing. Well, Brian took these two ideas, the traditional physics that we just exist because we do and everything's here because it is, and the one that this is a computed virtual reality. He had this big matrix, and down one side was all the things we knew, all the facts. What did, what did we know by experiment? Okay, that's the data. Those are the data points. And then he took the virtual reality idea and said, how does that fit the data? How does that explain the data? And then he took the traditional physics, how does that fit the data? So he had this big matrix, and when he was done, the last paragraph in his paper said, physicists, wake up. This concept of a virtual reality fits the data a whole lot better than the traditional concept. It explains more with fewer problems. So that was uh, a paper just presented like a year and a half ago, and since then uh, Whitworth has, uh, has presented another paper that takes this idea on a little, a little further. So that's where we are uh, present day. Now, let's uh, leave physics for a bit and talk about uh, metaphysics and reality and, and see how all this ties together. Okay, reality is information. Now, that may be a little hard for you to swallow, but reality is information. But now, look at it this way. What is your reality? What's your reality right now? Well, it comes through your senses, right? It's just what you see, hear, feel, smell. That's your reality. If you didn't have any senses, what would your reality be? Nothing. You'd be a point of consciousness floating in a black void. That's all. Okay? So, what is this, this uh, reality? It's just data. That's all. Photons hit your eyes, get focused by the lens, go to the retina, and what happens at the retina? They turn into electrical pulses, discrete electrical pulses, not continuous electrical, discrete pulses. Those pulses go into your nervous system, and, and what do they turn into? They hit synapses and, and neurons fire off in different directions. You get neurons and patterns of neurons. What are neurons? Discrete pieces of information. So what is your reality? It's data. It's little electrical blips. It's neurons and patterns of neurons. It's digital data. And when I say digital, I mean discrete. Digital is another word for discrete. It comes in packets, little separate units, neurons, little pulses. So that's what your reality is. Nothing but data. Now, if, I, if all of your senses were somehow terminated and you were in that, that black void of point consciousness, and then I could stimulate your central nervous system just like it's being stimulated now. I could reproduce all those little electrical signals just at the right places on your, in your central nervous system. What would you experience? You'd experience just what you're experiencing now. And there'd be no way for you to tell the difference. No experiment that you could do that would differentiate one from the other. So now it's just a small step from there to say, well, what is our reality? It's just a data stream. It's a data stream coming down to consciousness, and we interpret that data as this reality. Because, in fact, that's what's happening here. We're getting the photons. We're getting the pressure waves on our ears. It turns into data, and our brain, we think it's our brain. It's not really our brain. It's our consciousness interprets that data to be this reality. This is just an interpretation of a lot of digital information. That's what this is. That's what all this reality is. Okay, so consciousness is the fundamental reality. The larger consciousness system is a digital information system. At the most fundamental level, consciousness is just information. Information at the most fundamental level is bits. I'm not going to 
you know, we can get more complicated than, than bits and, and binary. We could go qubits and there's other things besides binary, but I'm just keeping it at the most basic level here for the, to get the concepts across. The most basic level information is bits and the most basic level bits are binary, okay? That's the most basic thing. So information is non-physical and subjective. Thus consciousness is non-physical and subjective. And you're thinking, information is non-physical? Well, wait a minute, you know, this is the information age and I have information overload and, and why is it non-physical? It'd be easy to get rid of if it were non-physical. But think about it, it is. Information is the meaning, the content, the message. It's not the media. Okay, that's the paper in the book is the media. It's not the code symbols. That's the ink squiggles on the book. Those are the code symbols. Neither one of those are information. It's not until a consciousness looks at those code symbols on that paper that it extracts the information. Information requires consciousness. Now, you can put a book, you can put paper in a bottle. You can put um, ink in a bottle, but you can't put information in a bottle. The content, the meaning, is non-physical. That can't be weighed, has no weight, takes up no space. It's not physical. Okay, so information is non-physical. If consciousness is just an information field, then consciousness is non-physical. Okay, um, I think we've done that. <clears throat> okay, that takes us to uh, information in a digital system is represented by organized bits. So let's talk about organization. If you were a double E, you'd, you'd say this in terms of signal and noise. You have a signal, that's the information, and you have noise, and that's still energy, but it's random. It, there's no information in randomness. So if with, to get information, you, you have to not have randomness. You have to have order. Okay, now a measure of order, or perhaps I should say a measure of disorder, is called entropy. It's a measure of disorder. So if you have high entropy, you have a lot of disorder. You have randomness. If you have low entropy, you have a lot of order, a lot of coherency. Okay, that's the, that's the difference. So... Um, uh, if you have an information system, this information system is, as it has information in it, it has to have order. As that information dissipates and no longer has information, you go to higher entropy. All right? um, entropy can be thought of in another way as well, and you'll see how the two are connected. If you have high entropy, you have very little ability to affect anything or do anything. If you have low entropy, you have a lot of ability to affect things. You have power. The physics term is it's, it's the ability to do work but you have power. Now, imagine a, a bottle of gasoline. So you have a bottle of gasoline. Uh, as a bottle of gasoline, the molecules in that gasoline, that'll be our system, they have a lot of ability to do things, right? They can change things. You can throw a match in there and suddenly everything in the vicinity has changed. You can pour it in your car and you can drive your car someplace. So that gasoline, because those, those molecules of gasoline are ordered, they're packed in a very small place, it's so dense it's a liquid. Okay, now we let that, eva that same gasoline evaporate. Now they've evaporated, entirely gone. We still have a system of gasoline, still the same number of gasoline molecules exist in the universe. They're just spread all over the atmosphere. What can they do? Nothing. See, they've lost their power because they've lost their order. Now they're random and they lose power. So that's two, two ideas about entropy. It's a measure of disorder, and it also tells you it's a measure of power or ability to affect something. All right. Um, <clears throat> Self-changing systems with a purpose evolve to be more successful within their environments uh, by lowering their entropy. Evolution is a very fundamental concept. Technologies evolve. You know, uh, governments, mon monetary systems, everything evolves or de evolves. You know, it goes both ways. But things change. Self-changing systems that can learn and that can change themselves evolve. And you can take that evolution and explain it in terms of entropy. You evolve when you're decreasing the entropy of your system. In other words, the system works better. It's more organized. It's more functional. And you're de-evolving as, as you dissipate that information, and it becomes more random. Okay? So even our own evolution can be, our biological evolution can be put in that term, in terms of entropy. Um, so consciousness is a self-aware, self-modifying system evolving toward lower entropy states. All right, let's talk about the uh, attributes of consciousness. Um, well, one more thing about evolution, and that is that a large complex system 
only has two choices. You'd think it might have three. It can either evolve, it can de-evolve, 